Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we shall talk about the transient transpass of second order systems. In the last lecture, we talked about a transient transpass of first order systems, and we learned that uh, first order systems always have the same shape of response. The only difference uh, is uh, the speed of response and uh, different systems were characterized by a parameter that is called the time constant and time constant gives us information about the speed of response for that particular system. Similar parameters uh, for example rise time and uh, settling time were also defined for the response of first order system. All these uh, parameters give the same information that is how fast is the response of the system. For a second order systems, uh, the, there are two parameters, uh, that is the speed of the response and also the shape of the response. Uh, different systems can have different shape of the response, which uh, we shall discuss in today's lecture. A second order system uh, can be described by uh, this uh, diagram, uh, that is uh, the degree of the denominator polynomial is 2, that is why we call it a second order system. Before we talk about a general second order system, let's talk about some particular examples. Here we have a second order uh, system, transfer function of a second order system and uh, uh, it has uh, two poles because the roots, uh, the degree of this polynomial is 2, therefore this polynomial will have two roots which are the poles of the system. One root is at s equal to minus 1.146 and the second root is at s equal to minus 7.854. Uh, these are shown over here in this pole 0 map. Uh, we are interested in uh, uh, seeing uh, the response of the system for a step input. Uh, so uh, response of the system uh, for step input is uh, given by in Laplace domain is given by 9 over s into s square plus uh, 9s plus 9. Uh, this is the transfer function and the Laplace transform of the input is 1 over s so transfer function multiplied by the Laplace transform of the input. Uh, we can also uh, express uh, this uh, denominator polynomial in this form by factorization and uh, uh, we want to see the behavior of this response in time domain. For that purpose, we shall need to take inverse Laplace transform. To obtain inverse Laplace transform, we obtain the partial fraction expansion of this expression. Uh, you all can easily determine the partial fraction expansion. Uh, once we have partial fraction expansion, then by taking the inverse Laplace transform, the time domain representation of this uh, c of s that is c of t is equal to 1 which is the Lapla inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s inverse Laplace transform of this term is over here and inverse Laplace transform of this term is over here. So for a step input uh, the output or the response of the system will have uh, this uh, expression. Uh, we can plot this expression uh, that plot is shown over here. Uh, this is the time axis and on the vertical axis we have uh, C of t. C of t is given by this relation which is written over here. So uh, this kind of response is called overdamped response that is this S-shaped response that is the that is called overdamped response. Why this uh, terminology overdamped that will be explained later but uh, before we explain it let's uh, talk about some other cases uh, we can uh, easily obtain this pole zero map and the step response of this transfer function in MATLAB uh, that is uh, uh, we have a G uh, as you know there are different uh, ways to enter a transfer function into MATLAB uh, so over here this command tf uh, is uh, more convenient you can uh, you can use other commands as well for example ZP, uh, zpk and uh, uh, other commands as well so the dynamic uh, in this command 
uh, here you enter the coefficients of the numerator polynomial here you enter the coefficients of denominator polynomial so in numerator there is 9 and in the denominator we have uh, uh, s square plus 9s plus 9 so coefficients are 1 9 and 9 1 9 and 9 so we have entered this transfer function into MATLAB uh, and then its p pol0 map is obtained by this command pz map of this uh, transfer function uh, which is shown in this uh, gra uh, diagram figure that will short open shortly so one pole is at s equal to uh, something minus 1.15 and the other pole is located at here minus 7.85 step response of the system can also be plotted by using the command step and uh, that is shown uh, again in this figure so this is uh, the same shape uh, that was uh, shown uh, in the slide so such kind of response is called overdamped response uh, there are other shapes of responses as well for example, if we have this transfer function 9 over s squared plus 2s plus 9 and uh, we can determine the roots of this denominator polynomial by uh, and those are those roots are the pole and uh, uh, these poles are uh, shown over here in this uh, s plane one pole is at s equal to minus 1 plus j square root of 8 and the other pole is its complex conjugate remember that if the poles are complex these are always in pair that is if one pole is over here second pole must exist over here for real uh, polynomials uh, for step input we can obtain the output in a similar way that is uh, the transfer function multiplied by the Laplace transform of the input will be the output and then we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform of this which is written over here uh, and then the shape of the response if you plot this curve we get uh, this shape of the response and such kind of response is called underdamped response that is before reaching its steady state value it will first rise above the steady state value and then after some transients it will settle down to its uh, final value and such kind of response uh, is called underdamped response uh, another case is uh, of uh, this uh, of a transfer function given by 9 over s squared plus 9 uh, here uh, the coefficient of this s is 0 uh, we can easily determine the poles of this transfer function which are at uh, uh, on the imaginary axis one pole is at s equal to j3 other pole is at s equal to minus j3 and uh, uh, again the step, step response can be determined by multiplying the transfer function with the Laplace transform of the input the same expression of c of s can be represented in time domain by taking the inverse Laplace transform uh, you know how to, to take the inverse Laplace transform if you do not remember that uh, just revise those concepts so inverse Laplace transform of uh, this C of s is given by 1 minus cosine 3t which when plotted uh, in time domain uh, is shown by this curve uh, that is uh, there is uh, oscillatory uh, behavior in the response of the system and such kind of response is called undamped response this is underdamped this is undamped uh, and uh, the fourth case is this one uh, that is uh, the poles of the system are both the poles are at s equal to minus 3 and uh, the response when written in time domain is given by 1 minus 3t e raised to the power minus 3t minus e raised to the power minus 3t uh, such kind of response is called critically damped response uh, this graph is quite similar to the one 
that is uh, shown on the previous slide so just by looking at this graph you cannot differentiate between this graph and the graph shown on the previous slide however if uh, poles of the system are uh, equal uh, real and equal then the response is called critically damped so for second order systems this will always be the case that is if poles are uh, in the left half as plane and these are equal the response will be critically damped if poles are on the imaginary axis the response will be undamped and if poles are complex then the response will be underdamped and if uh, poles are uh, real and different then the response will be crit, uh, overdamped so the advantage of this discussion is that without solving the differential equation or without solving uh, without finding the inverse Laplace transform we can just look at the location of the poles and can qualitatively talk about the shape of the response for a system now these uh, words uh, under damped uh, undamped critically damped why these terminologies this is explained on the next slide here uh, you have a spring mass and damper system with which you are already familiar uh, and you can easily obtain transfer function for uh, this uh, spring mass damper system which is given by uh, this expression which can be equivalently written into this form uh, we can see that uh, this transfer function is quite similar to the general transfer function that was discussed on previous slides that is a constant divided by s square multiplied plus uh, some constant multiplied by s plus another constant so uh, what you intuitively see is that if there is no friction in this system and you uh, pull this mass up to certain position and then release it if there is no oscill if there is no friction then this object will keep on oscillating to, to and fro motion uh, that is if there is no damping there will be oscillatory behavior no damping continuous oscillations uh, as uh, and therefore this response will be called undamped no damping if there is small friction then it will oscillate about its uh, uh, final position and then uh, oscillations will decay down uh, so such kind of uh, response when there is less damping is called under damped and if you have high damping high friction uh, this will uh, there will be no oscillations in the behavior of the system so that is why this response is called overdamped uh, there is a value of friction uh, that is the critical value for which uh, the response will uh, slight change in that value will uh, change the behavior between these two uh, uh, situations and that response is called critically damped response so advantage of this whole discussion is that without solving the differential equation just look at the poles of the uh, transfer function and uh, we can quickly talk about the qualitative behavior of the system as an example we have uh, this transfer function of a system uh, which uh, can be rewritten into this form so the poles uh, there are two poles one pole is at s equal to minus 25 the second pole is at s equal to minus 5 both the poles are real uh, and different uh, and are in the left half s plane so what should be the shape uh, of the response for the system from the previous discussion you can uh, say that the response will be over damped uh, which we can verify uh, using MATLAB uh, as well uh, we have G given by uh, we can use the command TF and uh, transfer function is uh, 130 and 225 coefficients 130 225 in the numerator this was 225 
and step response of this transfer function is shown by this graph which is overdamped response so as an assignment uh, you have uh, a door closer a simple door closer which is used to close uh, doors and uh, this door closer uh, consists of a damper uh, which is uh, damper is basically a cylinder inside which uh, uh, some uh, object moves in a viscous uh, medium so here this is viscous damper and there is a spring and on this side door is closed uh, door is attached so if we uh, write uh, if we draw the equivalent spring mass damper uh, that is uh, shown by this uh, diagram that is a mass attached with a spring and a damper and the other end of this uh, arrangement is connected to some fixed structure so uh, let's uh, consider that mass uh, that is attached to this uh, uh, door closer is 30 kg uh, as an assignment you are required to determine the parameters k and fv such that the response of this uh, system is critically damped so uh, in the next lecture uh, in, in this lecture we have uh, talked about uh, under damped uh, systems uh, we are generally more interested in such kind of uh, responses and uh, we shall discuss this response in more details in the next lecture inshallah